Hello everyone and welcome to Don't Starve Together tutorial for Enter the Gorge. Today I'm gonna be giving you some basics and some tips on how to play this version of play. Apparently some of you are struggling a little bit and well I'm gonna try to help you out with that. So first of all we're gonna need at least three players or there might be a bit too much work to do, let's say. You will need to feed the right cravings to the gnaw and obviously the better the ingredients um, the better let's say more money you will get and some also some special coins that you will need to unlock some stuff throughout the game. So I'm gonna just put a custom match here, I'm gonna do something random and I'm gonna just do single player which I do not recommend just to be showing you the three different categories that you have. Now you can be the chef, the forager or the farmer and um, each character will have its own special ability unlike the, the classic don't starve, don't starve together uh, their abilities will be different. So what works best for me will be the trio of Wes, which is surprisingly not useless. <laughs> he will be really good for you to get cheaper prices on stuff that you will have to buy, like ovens or grills. So usually for cooking, I actually go for Wes, even though his expertise is not cooking. And you will know why. So Woody is a great gatherer, on my opinion, because he will get your wood really quick and you will need a lot of wood throughout the game as well. Not just to lighten up the fires, but to exchange for tools or the bucket of poop. And another great one to be the farmer would be either Weber or the Wicker Bottom, because she comes with two books that will be very, very handful in the beginning of the game to speed things up. Alright, so I'm just gonna go for the waiver right now, is just to show you a little bit on how to get around the game. I don't recommend you to go alone on this. Alright, so we start the game coming out of this oily hole. <laughs> and we have Mumsy. She will be our help throughout the game on letting us know what are the cravings for the gnaw and we can also buy some essential stuff. She will throw some coins on the beginning which will be very helpful. So I'm gonna show you the basics first as if you were the cooker. So first thing you want to get with these coins will be to get a cook pot kit which will be the one you can do most uh, basic recipes at. So let's spend some six coins on it. We unwrap this thing and set it up. Alright, so now we obviously wait to know what the gnaw wants. In this case, it will be a snack. Now, you will most likely start without any recipe. I already have a few, um, which I can base myself on. But I will also leave you a link on the description uh, so you can check out some recipes. Now, he wants a snack. In the beginning of the game, the most easier one for you to do will be the stone soup. Because while you're working out your first meal, you will have obviously the farmer already getting some seeds and the gatherer getting some wood and doing what I'm just gonna do for you now, which will be getting some potatoes that are already ready to harvest. And with this we can do our first snack while everything gets in place. I will also explain to you what we can do on the pig elder and so on and so forth. Now we still some potatoes. Hello. And there's also some mushrooms around, so we will get a mushroom. And run, forest run. We are gonna get him a stone soup. So let's get ourselves a stone. Soup. 
This is just for you to understand the basics. Alright, so we also stole this lovely rock. And we're gonna shove it all in the pot. So, let's put a stone, let's put a potato and a mushroom. We pick it up, hang it on the cook pot, and throw some fire. In the meanwhile, your gatherer is gonna be picking up the sacks and gathering all of the wood they can from you. Now, you wanna pay attention to the animation on the, on the cook pot. Because if you let it uh, cook for too long, you will get goop. Uh, maybe to fill, fill up there. Alright, so let's throw in some more stuff so it cooks and burns. Now when the animation changes on the pot, when you see some vapor coming out of it, it's the right moment to take it off, it means it's ready. There we go. Now we made a stone soup. We're gonna put it on inventory and sacrifice it. Now if you did it well and you gave him a snack, you're gonna get more coins. And throughout the game, the better your meals, the better ingredients, the better rewards. And these are just regular coins which you will need to use to buy an oven kit, a grill kit, eventually you will get some uh, sapphire medallions which you will get for... you will get to buy the silver plate, silver bowl because with this you can plate your meals and get better rewards so throughout the game you will eventually have succeeded with your meals and if you come here to Bogmerm you'll be able to buy an iron key with one of the sapphire medallion that you've got. So with this iron key, while everyone else is doing their stuff, you will come here to this gate and you will unlock the gate. Over there you're gonna have another friend of yours that will sell uh, more seeds, which I'll also explain later with a farmer. And you will have larger bowls because eventually you'll buy the oven kit and all. And some recipes require you to put four ingredients. For example, the regular cook pot can only take three. Obviously, with four ingredients, you gotta get better rewards and do more complicated recipes. For example, let me see if I have one here that I can show to you that would have four, reci four ingredients. For example, the meat pie. The meat pie is made in the oven, and as you can see here on this little icon, you're gonna need a larger pot. This pot require this pot will allow you to have four slots, and you you will get better rewards with the meat pie. And if you silver plate it, like you see on the icon, you will most likely get uh, the two sapphire medallions and just three regular coins. Now, you want to balance the way you spend your coins as well. You're going to have to share it with the farmer because he will need to get some seeds for you. And we'll get there in a bit. But you will also need to buy stuff from your friend Billy. Now, Billy will sell us uh, pigeons. Well, when you need meat plates and you still don't have enough to go for a trap or whatever. But also very important to actually get your plates to to give you better stuff you should get a salt rack now I'm gonna get one now just for you to see how it works you're gonna put your salt rack here and within I don't know four or five minutes you will have some salt you pick it up some salt crystals you come here to the milling stone and you can turn that into proper salt now one salt crystal will give you three salt which you can use for any meal you want and you will also uh, get some seeds for wheat and with two wheat you can change it for flour which we will need later to make bread also after you unlock the garden that we were just uh, near at you can get some spotty sprigs and with three of them you will get some spot spice this will also be an ingredient for some, some of your meals 
Now, um, I'm also going to leave you uh, in the description a link for other recipes or more complicated ones so you can uh, get favors. Now you, want, you win this game by getting three favors and those three favors you exchange them here on Mumsy. Here you go. To the, uh, you change it by the ancient key. Now when you get the ancient key, which is basically your goal, you also put it here on the altar, sacrifice, and we're all safe from the plague. Now what also... What other tips can I give you on cooking? Mumsy will also will Mumsy will always tell you uh, what's the next what's the next dish, which they can be sometimes random, but they're pretty much a snack, then some veggies or bread, then soup, meat or fish, and a dessert. Then back to veggies, snack or soup, some fish, meat or bread, pasta, which is usually one that when you plate it's very likely that you get some nice rewards for it cheese or dessert and cheese or soup now this can be slightly random but most of the times this is the, the order you can also take some tips from Mumsy when she tells you what kind of craving it is she will also let you know that you might have a good chance on getting a favor or getting a sapphire or a red coin now the sapphire medallions you can use them to trade for the plates the red mark you can use to trade for goat milk. It will give you three goat milk, one red mark. And those same sapphire, you can change them here on, on Sammy for the iron key. Now you want to communicate a lot while you're playing this because you will need to let the farmer know more or less uh, what's your need for vegetables or for wheat to make flour you might have to change positions every now and then and also let know let the gatherer know like what are your needs for wood for berries for poop well all of those things so make sure to communicate a lot with uh, throughout the game now usually the meals that will most commonly give you some nice rewards if you plate them will be pasta or cheese, uh, desserts and certain snacks, you also want to read what Mamsi says, and meat if you have a nice complex meat dish. Also uh, obviously you will, you will need after the cook pot you will need the oven kit because it will ask you for bread and the bread you will have to do it on the oven kit now the grill kit will give you some uh, other options for food which are more complex and better rewarded as well like right now we need a bread uh, meal I haven't spent that money on the oven but I do have the coins but let's say we spent it with uh, seeds or something and you have no chance of doing a, a bread meal then what you do is you just make whatever other random meal sacrifice it, you will obviously get a lower reward and this this level here will go down way quicker like it's almost done now but uh, at least you will get to step out to the next uh, craving and maybe you'll be able to save yourself <laughs> alright I'm gonna explain now to you a bit more of the farming Alright, let's get going with the farmer now. For the farmer, I'm gonna pick Wickerbottom. Let's see. 
let's go again single again I do not recommend it's gonna be mainly impossible and here we go again out of this oily hole so as a farmer while I've showed you the the cooker basics while he does his thing you're gonna go immediately for your axe because you're gonna need it to make some tills on the floor and you are gonna steal four coins because the other six are needed for the cooker to buy the oven now on my experience the easiest way to do this with a bit more basic dishes but you'll still be able to get the favors will be uh, talk to Sammy and get some uh, wheat seeds and I usually get around three seeds for three bags I mean for wheat seeds and um, one for potatoes well first we have to buy the cook pot kit otherwise Sammy won't talk to us so in here we have these are the basic main seeds but later throughout the game with this key and unlocking the garden you can also get some tomato and garlic seeds now I'm gonna leave this on the description as well but the fluffy seeds are potato the round ones are turnip the oblong ones are carrot pointy ones are onion blue seeds are for wheat and a packet of mixed seeds now usually I go for three blue seeds and one of potato now I don't have enough space for this I'm just gonna drop some stuff around not very important right now and here we go now at this point the gatherer will get the, the potatoes that I've showed you initially for the cooker so he can be preparing the snack which usually turns out quite good to be the, the stone soup it gives you around 10 coins usually so while they do that out and work it out we start our farm why do I usually get more wheat and just a few potatoes at first? Well, wheat, uh, when you turn it into flour, it does not perish. And in this game, all the items are very... Like, they perish very, very quickly. And because you will need bread eventually, uh, might as well have some flour to start by. The potatoes are also something like very basic in almost every recipe, so that's also why I go for some potatoes. Now we plant our wheat. And this is one of the reasons why I like Wicker Bottom for a start. Uh, because she comes with two books and they turn out to be very useful at this point of the game. Now, because you don't want to wait uh, that much to get all your stuff to grow and because you're just in the beginning of the game and you're gonna need some basic stuff you plant all your stuff and while everyone is doing their thing you can use the book and get a nice crop for a start Okay, so admitting they're doing their stuff and the gatherer is getting wood and hopefully some buckets of poop for you to fertilize your next crops. You have some... Well, you have a little spare time to actually help the, the chef. So you're gonna pick up all this sweet that you just made. And run over here to the milling stone and get some flour ready now you require two wheat to make one flour initially if you do how I'm doing you'll get six flour which will be good enough for the beginning usually for bread you can use either two flour or you can use the three flour if you don't have any extra ingredients so you'll be good for a little bit of the game usually I just leave it here next to the cooker or leave it on the safe as you prefer 
In the meanwhile, these potatoes are gonna be ready as well. And at this point of the game, the gnaw might be asking for either a dessert or something like that. And for the dessert, usually the gatherer will go and get the bushes, the berry bushes, which you will need three berry bushes to make the, the berry jam. So, you can either store it here or whatever. And by this point you will have some extra coins, you can get some more uh, wheat seeds and some potato seeds. Usually I will get, like my second turn, maybe a, a pack of mixed seeds so you can have some extra veggies. Um, some potatoes and some more wheat. So you do all the same job, you keep making sure that there's always vegetables and uh, some flour available for the cook. Now bear in mind that as I told you, stuff will perish very quickly, so you also want to make sure you balance uh, the way you plant stuff. You don't want to be planting everything at once, because then everything will start perishing at the same time. And you want to make sure you use very fresh ingredients, so you can get better rewards again. Now, uh, at this point of the game, uh, the cooker might have been able to actually unlock here the iron gate. Now, after you unlock this, you can pick some spotty shrubs. You will need three of them to make uh, one spice, which you can add to food. And here on this bogmurm, you will have available tomato seeds, which you will definitely need for pasta. And you will also have some garlic seeds. Now, I recommend you to get more tomato seeds. If you, again, if you want to do some more uh, basic meals to, to keep going on the game. Uh, you also have available some larger cook pots, which uh, the cooker will want to use. And you have a bucket that you can buy for three coins and you can put it on the sugar wood tree so you can get some sap and with that sap make syrup. Some of the more complex uh, recipes will require some syrup as well. Now the sap doesn't perish but you have to make sure that when you pick it up from the trees you pick it up on the right timing because if you leave it for too long then you might have a problem and it will get full of bugs and will be rotten and all of that. It will be useless basically. Now you also want to help the cooker by getting some fish. So you come here to our friend Billy and you can also buy a fishing rod. Now I don't have three coins right now but with the fishing rod you come to the other pond that's available because on the other one supposedly will have the salt rack going on so you fish uh, here a couple of salmons obviously when you have the notion that the fish recipe might come soon because again it will perish So basically your job as a farmer will be to make sure that the cooker has all the needed vegetables, flour as well, you can help with the salt and with the spices when you have some time free, some time available. And also in here the gatherer is gonna give you some buckets of poop by changing them, changing logs. Throughout the game, if you want to have like these signs and you're a big fan of them, then you can also change some logs for shovel. And with the shovel, you can dig the signs out. Now they're merely static, so to say. It's just for pure decoration. If you like your farm more cutesy. Well, we failed. 
and uh, the plague is upon us. Next, I'm gonna give you a, a little tutorial on the gatherer, and that will be our last. Right now for our last category will be the gatherer. Usually I prefer Woody because he does chop very quickly and we're gonna need a lot of wood throughout the game. But again feel free to explore any other classes because it all depends on your game style. So I'm gonna go with Woody here. Alright now with the gatherer we first thing we just pick up the axe and run. We're gonna run first thing for the potatoes to help the cooker with the fair with the first uh, craving, which in this case will be the snack. Again I recommend uh, the stone soup because it's the easiest one to make with what you have available starting the game and will give you some nice money. Now we steal these potatoes and we're also we also can get some mushrooms. Now remember mushrooms is something that takes quite a while to grow and I think we have maybe like three maximum four of these trunks available um, throughout the map so you don't want to pick them up all at once just when you really know that you're gonna need them for the recipe then you pick them up otherwise you might be stuck with some some recipes that you might want to do look here's another one and here's another one so just make sure you pick them up when you really need them and they perish super quick as well All right, so the cook has done their thing, bought the oven, all of that. You deliver the potatoes, the mushrooms, and if possible, you also go pick up the stones near the, the crabs on the right side of the map. And right away you go and hunt for wood. Because you're gonna wanna provide tons of wood for the cooking process. The quicker, the better for you. And you will also need to exchange logs for buckets of poop so you can help out the farmer uh, fertilizing their stuff and thus all the game going really well organized and quick. Alright, so let's assume we already gave the cooker a couple of logs. We take the chance and run for a bucket of poop. Now here on the pig elder is where we do our shopping. We also have uh, keys available to open some safes that are up on the map and, and stuff that's locked. So with 10 logs, we can get ourselves a bucket of poop. Also, you might want to gather whatever poopies you can find from the old beefaloos, because all of those will be of a great help to the, to the farmer. So you can just drop out your stuff near wherever the farmer is doing their things. The rot is also very helpful. And... Um, if you do have some extra time, then you might want to help out either buying the salt rack 
making some salt with the salt crystals, you know, to spare some time with the cooper as well. Uh, here's our friend Billy. He's always running around, so you have to search for him around this area. Now, he's still not available for me because I haven't bought the oven or whatever, and these things only get unlocked or available, so to say, after you've actually done your stuff. Now, you can also get the sap from those trees to make the syrup and all uh, as a gatherer, because uh, it will also spare some time either to the farmer or the cooker. Most important thing always will be communicating to know who's doing what, what's missing. That's, that's one of the most important ways to also win this game. Now you have some goals throughout the game, uh, which will get you experience, will make you level up. These accomplishments. Well, right now I only have 18 out of the 32. But as you play throughout the game, you can also have these in mind. Uh, well, obviously the main one will be to escape by getting the three favors and exchanging them for the ancient key. But you can also play having all of these in mind to get those extra points, level up, get your rewards and so on and so forth. Now as you discover new recipes, they're gonna be unlocked here and they're, they're gonna make your game easier, let's say. There are many different ways to do the same uh, dish. For example, as you can see in here, with two carrots uh, and, the ve and another veggie, uh, with two mushrooms, a potato, they will, they will all do the vegetable soup. Yeah, same for meatballs uh, and all of the other dishes. Now, what you always have to bear in mind is to get better rewards is do them with fresh ingredients and more complex. You can also help the cooker uh, by picking up some sapphire medallions uh, and making sure that there's always silver plates or silver bowls around here on the floor so that when you finish your meal you can change the plating and then uh, sacrifice that meal on the altar which will give you the extra stuff. You can use the salt after your dish is cooked. You have your meal here, you salt it up and then you serve it. It will get you some extra rewards as well. Now I think I've been through, well, the most important basics of the game. I hope you manage to win. And obviously share below your recipes, uh, any other tips you might have. Uh, share your game with us. Leave us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.